to another My Name Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another fivesies. I don't know. I mean, what? We've done top fives. We've done fives. We've done five on fives. We've done three on three tournaments. I mean, th th what, th what are we doing? Today, we have another fives. It's not top fives or anything like that, but it is a fives video that I was thinking about the other day because uh, you guys will see, understand it once I get there. But at this moment, we're not going to be starting off with the fifth thing. That's the fifth thing. We got to start with the number one thing. So today, guys, we're going to be covering five things that I've never done as a WWE figure collector. So these things could be like experiences. These things could be like things to do with the action figures. These could be things that we experience as WWE figure collectors as just as a whole. So you guys can let me know what you think down below and let me know down below if you've done any of these things and hopefully you have and hopefully you haven't. So starting out with number one, Brad, I have, I, like, I don't, I, I, tr my neighbors are having their roof fixed and my dog keeps getting pissed off at the workers that are walking up and down the street. So number one, I don't think I've ever, I just broke this axe. I glued it like last week and now I broke it again, so. I don't think I've done this one. I, I, I tried to think back like really hard and like really break it down, but I'm pretty sure I've never scalped, okay? I've never scalped a figure, you know, where you go to a store and you buy like three, four, five, six of them, and then you take, you know, uh, all six of them and flip them because they're popular or they're really sought after or whatever, and you try to make a profit off of that. I don't think I've ever done that. Not like condemning people that do do that because, you know what, it's free country, man. Go do whatever you want. I mean, like, it sucks for those in the area, you know, but at the end of the day what am i what, what do i do brad you know what do i do but i don't think i've ever done that usually you guys have seen me buy six or seven of a figure before but it's because i literally open all of them and use all of them which is probably a mental disorder however i like to make customs and fix-ups and stuff so you know i'm always buying like multiples of figures like you guys can probably oh, can't see it right now but i mean i have like let me i have six elite 64 seth rollins i've owned more than that i've used them for customs why why? Over there, I have five blue Tistas. I don't know. Just, just I, who, who knows? Who'd have thunk it? But I don't think I've ever scalped it. That, I, I don't think I have. Now, again, usually when I buy figures, it's for my own keeping. I don't usually buy them and flip them. That's just not something like, that doesn't recall in my brain if I've done that before. But, you know, that's just not something I've done. Number two, this kind of goes back to figures and stuff, but figure swaps. I've never done this, man. This is just terrible. All right, you go in the store, you look up there. I think I included this in my top five things I hate about WWE figure collecting. Yeah, man, the figure swaps are just bad, bro. They're not, they're not good, man. You don't want to do that. That is if you're doing that, man, just take a look in the mirror, Brad. Don't don't do that. Like I'm like I don't care. I know Amazon has their money. That doesn't mean that you can just order from them and then replace the figure cuz somebody else is going to give them more money and then they're going to get your crappy basic that you swapped the figure with. Don't do that ish, man. I've seen them in my area. I've seen them in different areas. I've seen crazy ones on Instagram and social media sites. Just don't do that. That's terrible. Don't don't, don't even look at it, Brad. You crossed the line if you did that. Now, I'm sure somebody watching this has done that before. Just just don't do it. Promise. Not good, man. Not good, and it's just not worth it. It's just it's just such a... Just no, Brad, don't. Number three, we're going to go to the positive side now. I guess it's positive. I don't know, but I've never done stop motion. Now, you're probably going to be like, that's not true, Brad. You do MDT all the time, but I don't classify you know MDT or pick fed stuff as stop motion. There's a difference between pick fedding and stop motion, and there's a difference in pick fedding and like hand fedding, and there's a different... Like, there's different elements to this, to this, you know, WWE figure creation or whatever you want to call it. Now, I will say that pick fetting is kind of like stop motion for the most part. It just eliminates a lot of steps, right? Like, instead of getting every fluid, beautiful moment in stop motion, like my intro. My intro is stop motion by Battle Stories. He is an absolute incredible stop motion artist. Pick fetting is what, you know, I do and G-Natty does and, and, you know, it's kind of like... Stop motion is the fluent stuff, and pick fetting is the kind of choppy, which, if you do it right, it won't be choppy. It can kind of be smooth and choppy, if you get what I'm saying. So, that is something I've never tried. I've never done the fluent stop motion. I don't think I have the patience for it. I feel like it requires a lot more time and energy and just talent, probably, overall. Like, I just, uh, there's just no way, man. And plus, I feel like stop motion works better for, you know, like, intro type stuff, or like a skit, or like a little small thing. Unless you have a full team of people working on it, and like, can make it looks super fluent and super nice like robot 
chicken, you know, they have a full team working on that thing all the time, and their episodes are only like 12 minutes or something like that, so that, I don't know. I've just never done it, man. I've never even attempted it. I want to attempt it. I just, no, I've never done that. Number four, we're getting back into toy hunting, Brad. I have never found an AEW chase figure. It's kind of weird, because the other night, I literally dreamed that I walked up on this, uh, I was literally, I was in the store, and I walked up on this big AEW, whatever you want to call it, little store display or whatever, and for whatever reason, there was a chase variant Luchasaurus. Now, we may get a chase variant Luchasaurus in the future. It may have been a vision, you know, I may get one finally. Maybe in the future, there will be a chase variant Luchasaurus, but we were in the store there. They had a bunch of Series 5, Series 1, like, there was a bunch of AEW figures, like, crazy amounts of it, and they had a chase variant Luchasaurus there. It was, like, in, like, a gold and white attire. It was similar to this one. It was similar to this one, but it wasn't this one. It, um, I don't remember the exact details, of course, because, you know, when you're dreaming, you're not really looking at the details of the, you know, of everything. Like, I've had some detailed dreams, and I can name it and, you know, see it and everything, but as far as the attire goes, I know that it was like a shiny gold, kind of like the gold that we're getting on our Pentagon, the new Series 6 Pentagon, but it was like that, but it had the red sticker on there, and I was super hyped, and then I woke up and was like... Uh, so I, I still have not found an AEW chase figure. I own a chase figure because I purchased it, but I have never found one, seen one in stores. I've never, you know, I, one day I will find them, man. I'm going to find them. I will start finding these things. I can feel it. So hopefully that will be the thing. And I remember in my dream thinking like, oh my God, I got to do a toy hunt. Like I got to toy hunt this. And then I woke up and it wasn't real and I was disappointed. But maybe we'll get an AEW chase Lucia source figure. Maybe we won't, but uh, I, I've never found one of those things. You know, the distribution on those things are insane. Like, they don't even make sense. There are one here and 17 over here and four. Guy walks in, finds three MJFs. Guy walks in, finds six Moxley's just chilling in the same store. I don't, I mean, what are we doing? I made a whole video on it. I think that was part of my top five things I hate about WWE figure collecting, maybe. Or no, never mind. The day before that video, I did the problems with AEW chase figures. And we covered all of my, uh, you know, all of my problems with that and, and stuff like that. But I will find them, man. I'm going to find them. And if you found one, that's awesome. I, I, I'm happy for you, but I, I want to find one myself, man. Either it'd be Darby or the Series 5. I don't know, man. I just really, really want to see a Chase figure in person. I think I'd crap my pants. And last but not least, guys, number five is going to be been to SDCC or a toy con in general. I've never been to some con that's all about toys. I've never been to a toy show, a trade show. I've never been to anything like that. I've always wanted to. Uh, I think we were going to try and go in 2020, but then, you know, with COVID and all the garb and all the stuff, they shut down everything. You couldn't even go to, you couldn't even go to the grocery store, let alone a toy con. What are you, on, what are you on grocery bags, Brad? They were, uh, yeah. So I want to go to SECC. I want to go there and see the figures live and do like live coverage. I would love to have a MDT microphone, interview people all over the place, interview some AEW people, interview Jeremy, interview Bill. I would love to do something like that. So maybe we can make that happen next year. Again, I think SDCC for this year is canceled again as far as the in-person event. But I think by next year, hopefully that'll be cleared up. I can go out there, uh, take one of my first trips to San Diego. It could be an excellent thing. So hopefully that will be a thing that we can do next year. And I look forward to that. And we can, you know, do the interviews, do all the things. I can do live coverage there. I can have my laptop there. I can do my videos on site and then upload them to you. So you guys would know all of my coverage on it. And maybe I wouldn't even have to put the images on there. I could literally just have my own video because I'm there in person and I could show it off. And then I can tell you guys some information that I found out from those guys so hopefully that'll be something that we can make happen next year i do plan on it so we'll have to just see about all of that but number five was you know just going to sdcc never been and just a toy con in general i know people go to like flea market swaps and all these different things and i've never done that brad so i would really like to so before that i'll probably end up going to a toy con before sdcc but i won't really want to go to sdcc man that's something i really want to do so i can get on all the exclusives and see all the stuff in person and, you know just talk to everybody man that'll be absolutely incredible incredible maybe meet some you know maybe meet you i don't know but anyways guys that pretty much does it for my video of five things i've never done as a wwe figure collector if you guys have done some of these things please let me know down in the comment section below and for today's random shout out guys it is going to go to marlon diaz who says video suggestion do a toy hunt we haven't seen one in a while well brad i tried to do a toy hunt in my dream the other day but uh i couldn't so, however, I think I'm going to Target today, so maybe we'll find some stuff and I can toy hunt for you guys and we can take a look at everything that they have and all of that good jazz and we'll just find out, but, uh, Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know if you have done any of these things or if you haven't done these things. I haven't done any of these things. At least I don't think so.
Shout out to Marlin and uh, don't cross the line. You cross the line, I've been.